Hey everyone, it's Dinah and we are here. We are here. I think I I I, I want to say we are here and I will say we are here, but I am finally here. This is actually the series premiere was like a while ago. So it was like almost a month ago now, but I am finally here. The official series premiere of the Disney Plus adaptation of the one and the only Percy Jackson and the Olympians. The show is going to be called The Olympians, um, but, you know, as far as I know, they are going to be adapting all five books and everything, the first of which I have very, very enthusiastically, very passionately, very wholeheartedly read and loved. I just, I, I can't... I did not ex like n expect it to, to be nearly as much of an actual page turner as it was. Like there were some chapters in here that literally left me on like a in what the fuck mode. And you know, at the time I was reading it too, I actually did you know have to kind of like kind of squeeze in some chapters and and and, and stuff to 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 get other shit done. And then I literally leave a chapter being like, what the fuck? Where's this going? What's gonna happen now? Um, but yeah, I'm very glad to say I finally, I finally, because I, finally, cause I think I actually did hold off on actually starting reacting to the show until I finished the book, because I think even once the show, um, the, 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 the first two episodes released, um, I, 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 I was kind of like halfway through the book, so I was at a point where, you know, I wouldn't be spoiled or anything, and I kind of actually react to it, but I was like, no, I, I want to actually complete this first and get this done and dusted, um, because otherwise I don't, I don't know how the different, kind of like, because it's being an ad adaptation and everything, I don't know how different it's going to be for me and how, like, how different I'm gonna process stuff and everything and even then but I feel like part of me was still subconsciously subconsciously like rushing through this so in the past few years I think my reading has been affected by me not having read for like a few years like it's, it's a long story but you know there was a time time like like in, in like my late teens I actually kind of dropped off reading and it was only like in the past few years that I've actually jumped back into it and everything so I feel like that time away has somewhat kind of affected like the way I actually intake information when, when reading that along with again me subconsciously rushing through this I feel like there's still like a lot that I haven't retained but there's enough that I have retained that I might still be able to you know like you know enjoy this in like a comparative way while still trying you know kind of trusting this to be its own kind of thing and an adaptation and I have no idea what they might change um my first consumption of this story was the movie I am unfortunately one of the people who actually watched the movie first and I liked it back then as a movie I enjoyed it I, I, I had no idea how different the book was. I think I actually didn't find out that there, there was a book until a while after watching the movie, and I don't know how, how, how good, like how good of an adaptation it was or how bad it was. And I eventually found out that people who loved the book did not like the movie one bit. And having read the book now, I I, I get it. I, <laughs> I I get it. So they they, they adapted Sea of Monsters as well. I haven't actually gotten started reading Sea of Monsters yet. Yeah, I've actually, I actually wanted to get through this show, and then I wanted to to read Sea of Monsters. So yeah, but this is the one where Rick himself and I think er, 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 like Rick, his wife, and I think er, anyone else on his team involved with the book is actually heavily, passionately, and enthusiastically. Um, <laughs> like involved with this show and they've wholeheartedly just made this you know knowing that like um, and especially like knowing like a show would be the best way to actually or like a better way to actually um, adapt this story and everything so yeah again five books I think the plan is for them to do five seasons I think there's been no news yet of like a renewal for season two but I don't know if that's just like a given and they're already in the process of developing it or something or what's happening there but um, yeah no I think from the moment this was announced I think it it was all hands on deck for the Percy Jackson uh, Olympians fandom and everything, and you know I I, I was still excited. I think even before like like the, it was announced before I started reading the books, and I think w w with them actually having announced the show, I think that was my kind of cue to get my hands on the books and read them because I was like, I I did love the movie and I want to read the books anyway. So you know I I definitely do want to be prepared by the time this show actually rolls around and everything. So I did that and I loved the book. And again, yeah, like the book makes me realize just how much the movies missed out on possibly even intentionally but like the movies i think it like the thing looking at the movies i think now it, it like they feel so lackluster i think from what i remember from the movies it feels so lackluster like the book itself it just it's such a you know it's it's, it's a whole different journey it's, it's a whole different journey it's such a it's such a, so much more of like a fruitful journey and so many other things just like just make more sense when you read the books and everything because it, it just adds so much more and there's just so much more that they explore i mean i, I don't know if i should mention it now or later because i think i mean i don't i mean i i i'm i'm kind of operating under the assumption that anyone watching this show will 
will be someone. I mean, I feel like most people watching the show would be people who've read the books because then they want to see the adaptation done faithfully. But then I think there there, there are some people who who are non book readers that I've seen even reacting to the show as well. So that's like a really cool sign too. I think again, um, if an adaptation of any kind of story gets people to go and consume the original too, then that's always a great sign. That's always a great sign, and especially like like an adaptation done faithfully too would definitely encourage it. I think I don't know how like how many other people back then like me who hadn't read the books like um like who watched the movie like what they thought of it because like, then from what i remember like the movie itself is like decent it's like a popcorn flick but then as an adaptation thinking back to now i haven't watched it in years but even thinking back to it now it's like like everything i like so much of what i loved in the book i can i can vividly remember none of it happening in the movie none of it happened like or it either didn't happen or it just happened so radically differently so so differently and it just it just changes so much so um, yeah i think i definitely want to read this book again maybe at like a slower pace or like a more kind of calm pace and like 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 l- less like i have to prepare something so i think for that reason i think i actually might like read sea of monsters directly after the finale so that way um you know i actually have time um before they they hopefully even start filming season two or anything like that so yeah but i'm i'm, I'm just so, so ready for the show i actually earlier today i actually did watch um the adam project as well because I, w- I wanted to get my first kind of dose of walker scoble like like his kind of you know like um kind of on-screen presence and everything and he is phenomenal i mean that movie itself is phenomenal like the adam project is just a terrific movie that i feel like anyone should just go check out it's a great movie but walker scoble in that especially like he definitely holds his own against some really really high caliber actors and everything um and stuff and this one now he gets to kind of lead slash kind of co-lead his own show like he, he is the titular character in this and you know but then of course you know anyone who knows the show will, will, who knows the story will know it's all about the trio it's all about the trio i am excited to see walker as percy but i am equally as excited to see Arian Simhadri as grover and leah sava jeffries as uh, annabeth as well so i'm like like that's gonna be my trio right off the bat i already know that's gonna be my trio so i'm i'm, I'm gonna be um I'm going to be ride or die for my trio. So, yeah, um, but, you know, I think uh, there's Bear McCreary doing the music. Oh, Bear, Bear McCreary. As soon as I found out he was doing the music, I was like, okay, this shit, this this is about to pop. He's about to pop off for this. So, you know, if, if they give this show a title sequence, I am... You know, I, I mean, I, I would really love a cool title sequence for this, like, just, like, even just for the music alone, but I don't know. But, I mean, Bear McCreary, like, his work on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Oh boy, but um, he's he. I think he he's even in recent years. I think he did. Um, I think he worked on the Lord of the Rings show as well, like the Rings of Power. So I think even in recent years, he's got like a lot more credits under his belt, and he's just he's phenomenal with, with, with the music and everything, and his team just just wow. So I don't know if, if Rick himself will, will, will be like like involved in in the writing of the episodes. I mean, I hope so. Perhaps you know maybe like at least a few of them, and then other people being involved too. But um, yeah, I think probably mostly just like producing. Um, don't know if he would have directed anything, but. This also might be like a ten episode season, or like a, I don't know exactly. I think Disney Plus, so it, it usually doesn't go too far beyond nine or ten or anything like that. So that being said, I think there's like twenty chapters in the book. So I don't know like how much they want to put into this or how much they're able to like get this being an adaptation to again i mean i feel like any changes they make in this one will be it'll be rick actually fully kind of um authorizing those changes and actually changing it to fit like a like a, like a perhaps like, like a more open audience or just fitting like a tv format you know like maybe some stuff that they can't do visually or story-wise or maybe just even stuff that he wants to, to try like a little differently or something like that so it could be like a, like a round two for him but either way he's involved he's got you know like a, like a great team kind of around him as well and you know did did any disney plus as well so i I don't know if if i've ever ever been this happy to actually jump into a show right from the get-go so percy jackson i am i think especially after having read the book i'm 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 that much more happy to be able to call myself like an actual like a member of the percy jackson (laughs) percy jackson fandom now so proud member of camp half blood so i think i actually did do a quiz a while ago i can't remember which cabin i got though i think I, i did it was like once, like months and months ago. I think maybe like like a year ago or something, or more than that. I think I actually did do like like a quiz. I think one of the quizzes I actually found or something um, online. I think I can't remember what cabin I got, but either way, we're gonna see what I kept. Like, um, I mean, hopefully they they have all the cabins here as well. So yeah, but I've been talking for ages, and also um, the the show did get like a two episode premiere as well. So in such fashion, I will be reacting to both episodes in this one video. So you get like a do it like the first time I've ever done this, like a dual episode reaction in one video. 
<laughs> assuming it goes, you know, with no errors um, on my end or on YouTube's end or anything like that, then you'll presumably see both reactions in one video. Otherwise, they might have to be split up for whatever reason. But fingers crossed it works. But yeah, we're going to be watching episode one and then I'll, I'll give my thoughts on that and everything and then um, we'll be jumping straight into episode two. Hopefully I should catch up in time for the show's kind of release schedule but if not then I'll just kind of work my way around it but either way I have been talking for ages now so we're, we're, we're all here to see this so yeah season one episode one aptly titled I accidentally vaporized my pre-algebra teacher that's how you start a Percy Jackson adaptation that is how you start it so yeah let's go. Look. I didn't want to be a half bug. Oh, he's doing the opening monologue. He's doing the opening monologue. It's dangerous. It's scary. It gets you killed in painful, nasty ways. Is he in Montauk? Because once you know what you are, they'll sense it too. Oh, God. They Percy's Percy's inner monologues is one of my favorite things about the book. I don't know how much they can include in this, but... Oh, there he is. There he is. Our very own Perseus Jackson. Oh god, oh okay. Not an opening title, but still a cool title card. Cool title card, yeah. Is Percy on the roof? Why is Percy on the roof? Back in second grade. Second grade, oh wow. Why the was I up there? Even the casting on second grade Percy is great. I could have sworn I saw something. Whoa, what's that? A Pegasus! That's a Pegasus! These impossible things. It felt like they walked Whoa. right out of the stories my mom always told. Is that a rhinoceros? So With armor? No, that's a garbage truck. Or mist, perhaps? Maybe it's mist? Something changed. Can't, that's not the Minotaur. I don't think it's the Minotaur. Wow, he's got a lot I of stuff. Grover. <laughs> Grover! Yeah. Oh, my boy! My beautiful horned boy! Oh, oh Grover. Oh, you know God. What? Oh, just... Can't believe this is happening. Hmm. Wow, the Minotaur's got underwear? What is it, wait, Calvin Klein? I can imagine a Minotaur and Calvin Klein. Not just how it looks. The dyslexia. But how it makes you feel. Mm -hmm. That's who your name is. Sally? Sally Jackson? Mama Jackson? Why name me after him? Not everyone who looks like a hero is a hero. And not everyone who looks like a monster is a monster. Hold fast, Perseus. Brave the storm that was made to break us, for we are unbreakable as long as we have each other. <laughs> and against all odds, he managed to find his way to a happy ending. You're trying to break me for what comes, prepare me for what comes next, aren't you? Perseus? <laughs> Mom? Oh, jeez. Right here, sweetie. Mommy's here. <laughs> Nancy freaking Boba Fett. You will learn to control yourself. Do you understand me? Me? Do you understand me? Oh, this is her, isn't it? Dodds. Mrs. Dodds. Oh. It's Mrs. freaking Dodds. I believe in you. Mm. And I believe you'll be needing this. <gasps> Hang on to that. Anaclusmos? I feel like... Oh, even swapping the because he's veg yeah he's vegetarian yeah. You could make an appointment to see Mr. K. No, 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 no. No, there's one thing I know about bullies is that you should never, ever stand up to them. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Oh gosh. Oh, <laughs> he did it. Oh, he did it. He did it. Oh no. Oh no. Riptide! It's Riptide! She's transforming right here, right now. Really? Where is it, Half Blood? Where okay. Is it? This is different. Oh, it's happening now. It's happening right here, right now. Oh, that's Riptide, alright. That's Riptide. That's Anaclosmos. Damn, okay, this is different. She didn't. Okay. That's a different. Where's Mrs. Dodds? There's no one here by that name. All right, mm. class, let's move along. Let's go. But in this case, the truth seems very Kyron. hard to deny. Mr. Jackson. Whoa, that's Rick. Is that Rick? Where am I seeing things? Other than uh, 
That's Rick Riordan in the corner, in the left. Ah, that's cool. Writer cameo. Yes. I do. Percy had told me earlier in the day that he wanted to get back at Nancy for all she'd done to us. Go. And he isn't being truthful about what happened at the fountain. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, uh, he has to get him expelled for his own safety. Yes. He's getting Percy expelled, so, for, yeah. Because they found him there, Mrs. Dodds, you know, being a fury, they found him at Yancey. You might have the most difficult journey. I suspect you are special. I don't need any more stories about how special I don't realize I am. Ah, uh, the skies were already stormy. Mm. Smelly Gabe. Hey, Eddie. Sorry about that. Yeah, oh, Eddie, the I'm building. Walking out. You're walking in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Smelly Gabe. Who do they cast for Smelly Gabe? I feel like his casting in the movie was done quite kind of well. You gotta live by my rules. Your roof? My mom is the only one employed here. Excuse me? What does it look like I'm doing right now? Fuck off. Losing at imaginary. <laughs> you would think that because you're a child. And. Seems accurate so far. Yeah, seems like an authentic portrayal of a fuck all abusive bastard. You deserve so much better, Sally. So much fucking better. It really wasn't my fault. I'm all wet now. I'm sorry, I'm just very glad to see you. He told me what he thinks happened with Nancy Bobo Fit. I told him I believe my kid. It was a real sure call. If there's one thing she believes in, it's her son. To pick up your home. Blue food, <laughs> blue food. Oh, I want an abundance of blue food in this in this show. I want an abundance of it. I called to reserve the place as soon as I got off the phone with Yancy. Who's Yancy? The school. <sighs> on my way home on Sunday, I'm gonna stop at D'Angelo's and pick up sandwiches in time for tip off. But if you make this miserable, I'm gonna go anyway. And then I'm gonna eat my sandwich and yours <laughs> while I listen to the game on the radio. You no, know, I hate watching the Knicks alone. So do I. Look, make Please, could you have them put the peppers on my sandwich? You got it. Take your shoes off before you get in my car. <laughs> oh, trust me, dude, you are not getting that car back. You are not getting that car back, at least not in one piece. Well, maybe in one piece, but one very, very different piece. You know what? Thinking about it, the 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 Camaro deserved better too. The Camaro, Camaro, the Camaro deserved better too. Even that one deserved, even that deserved better. Who are you? So weak, so scared. Run away, little hero. Before you get hurt. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Here. Oh my god. Okay. Mmm. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm used to feeling weird. I'm used to the world feeling weird to me, like a puzzle with half the wrong pieces. <sighs> I try to pay attention. I really try, and I'm daydreaming. Been there, done that. Mm-hmm. You saw something. Something that felt real to you, but no one else could see. What did she say to you? Oh, she knows. A long time ago, I met a man here on the beach. He was wise and brave and kind and noble because he he wasn't a man at all. He was a god. You fell in love with God? Like, like Jesus? <laughs> Not God. A God. Percy. Jesus is what comes to mind when you think of a God. You were a half-blood. And half-bloods are not safe in the world. And you thought puberty was bad. There is something wrong with my brain. I understand that I'm weird. Believe me, I get it. But I'm afraid something may be really broken. Help me. 
and and now you're telling me stories like it's gonna make it okay i know there's no such thing as monsters i know there's no such thing as gods and i know for certain that there's no such thing as demigods but whatever it is you're gonna say i don't want to hear it grover is he something's coming grover. i know that sounds weird. <laughs> is he grover, got his I'm not panicking. Grover, right? I'm also definitely Man's got his. I feel very how we're doing so far. Grover! What? Grover, why is there half a goat in your pants? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Percy, I'm a satyr. So the important thing is not to pay. We'll continue this in the car, let's go. <laughs> Ah, oh, this is perfect. I'm a satyr. And I'm your protector. You're my protector? If I hadn't gotten you kicked out of school, you'd have never survived the night. That thing that Dodds turned into, you saw it happen? Why didn't you say anything? I saw some of it. The mist kept her hidden even from us until it was too late. Mm. Mist? What's a mist? The mist. Something powerful is at work here. The sooner we get you to camp, the better off you're... You told him about camp, right? Camp. <laughs> Summer no. camp for half bloods. Whoa. Oh. Is that the Minotaur? The Minotaur. Isn't it Minotaur? Or is it Minotaur? He is next. He, he is brutal. He is relentless. He's wearing underpants. He's wearing underpants. He's got them Calvin Klein's on. Yeah. Oh, he's riding along with you now. Oh. Yep, R.I.P. to the Camaro. Oh gosh, a big R.I.P. to the Camaro. Come on, Sally. Come on, Sally. Oh. Oh, damn. Oh. Did it hit another car? Did it hit another car? Is everyone okay? Yeah. I'm okay. <sighs> I'm not ready. I'm not ready for what's about to come. I'm not ready. We're here. It's the boundary. No monsters can cross it. That one tree. Grover, I am entrusting you to protect my son, my only child. Don't worry, Mrs. Jackson. Keep him safe from anyone or anything that comes for him that wants to do harm to him, that looks at him the wrong way. Do you understand me? I swear. Uh, he swore an oath. He swore the oath. You are not broken. Hold fast. Brave the storm. Mm -hmm. I love you. Maybe I can confuse him, buy us both a little time to get away. Mom, please don't. It's nice that it's a red jacket too. Yeah. It'll be okay. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, I don't want I don't want to see this again. I don't want to see this again. Damn, they did a good job on him, though. They did a really good job on him. <coughs> ah, Sally. She's a coming. Anna Klusmas is coming. <laughs> I actually love the animation behind the sword. Yeah. Perseus versus the Minotaur. Oh. Oh. Yeah, this one's this one's tougher. This one's tougher than Mrs. Dodds. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. You already made a dent. You made a dent. <laughs> there we go. There we go. A trophy fit for a hero. He's waking, everyone. Give him some space, please. Percy Jackson. We've been expecting you. <laughs> Wait, is that the end? 
That's the wow. Well, oh, that's the end. Okay, it didn't. Okay, it didn't feel obvious right from the get go. That's the end. Okay. Huh. That felt quite fast. That did feel quite fast. Yeah. I mean, not to like the books weren't overly complex and long drawn out. I mean, it's not like the the, the, the even the, the the chapters in this weren't all that. But still, I feel I don't know. I think maybe actually seeing it in in like on screen, you know, the the pacing feels a lot faster. So. Yeah, but either way, that was a gr that was a, that was a really great start. That was a really great start. Okay, so yeah, um, I think yeah, I think I feel like um, for one thing, the, these episodes actually might be quite simple and easy to get through and everything. Like duration wise, I think that that one did not feel that long at all. I think I feel like, I don't know. I feel like with Disney Plus, like, with Disney Plus originals, like I think like um, they don't really seem to extend beyond even at most like the forty five minute mark. I don't think like they they, they really don't seem to be keen on pushing on that hour i feel like i don't know i mean most if not all kind of changes made or decisions made on this show you can kind of trust that um that 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 that, that, that rick um and i think her name is rebecca i think his wife i think his wife is Re 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 rebecca riordan um they've both like they, 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 they're both acting as, as like you know producers on this show they're both in charge and any changes that, that even disney might have made like they have to kind of give the kind of okay with as well they have to make sure they're comfortable with as well so whatever way that the, the show is formatted whatever changes they've made like however they're kind of making the show fit for a tv audience too i feel like you you, you can kind of trust that there's the, the suitable changes have been made and that you know um maybe those changes don't make sense immediately but maybe somewhere down the line that those changes might actually seem more fitting even reading the book i was like you know like the pacing of the book seemed quite kind of fast like fast paced and i think again it's because you know like like um rick riordan like he did a write them for a teenage audience like like for youths like for youths and everything he'd write them for teenagers and you know i think he, he he accounted for things like attention span and like you know trying not to make things like 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 making like expanding on the world and world building and putting in the lore and everything and also it, it's pre-existing all too it's, it's greek mythology so he, he didn't really invent anything new and if this book is intriguing, then it, it should kind of push you to actually go to Google Greek mythology yourself and see how much of how much more is out there and and stuff like that. So you know, like like with this being a young enough young enough story, with the target audience being young enough, I feel like he, he made it so that you know it's quick, it's simple, it's easy to get through, and especially like Percy being the main character, being both ADHD and dyslexic too. I feel like the book the the, the, the book definitely, and I feel like that might have been a thing for me as well. Like um like maybe like the the reason. I kind of maybe fell out of um, reading for a while was because some of the books I tried to read closer to me falling off the, the, the bandwagon was like, you know, like I, I tried to read bigger books or longer books or, you know, other stuff. And then it just didn't, didn't really kind of grab my attention span. I, I, didn't, I didn't really feel motivated or driven to go back to it once I put it down again. And then, you know, page turners or not, like I, I, did, I just didn't really feel kind of compelled enough to keep reading it or to actually, you know, like sometimes I'd have to, you know, like it, it, it pushed me more to actually try and like to, to to try harder as opposed to enjoy reading. So like for the for the books I chose, my enjoyment wasn't there. But then that kind of affected my ability and my enjoyment of reading as a whole. But then coming back to this, even reading this, like, I could not like I, I didn't want to put it down. Like I had to put it down at some point, but I, I just didn't want to put it down. So I think subconsciously, I think, I think knowing that that, that I, I was reading it to get ready for the show, I feel like there was that subconscious kind of rush of like I need to finish this so I can, I can actually get to the show because I really want to react to the show. But then also it's like you know the more that I read on, it was like this is you know, the, the, this is great, it's entertaining, there's like like drama, there's mystery, there's like a whole kind of, you know, like like thing behind this that, that I really want to get into. So it, it definitely kind of made me want to keep reading. So I think, you know, like um, knowing that like um, his his title character is like, like actually goes through all of that just like um, a lot of youths do and a lot of readers do and book lovers do want to read, they want to keep reading, they, they don't want reading to feel like a chore, they don't want reading to feel like, you know, they want it to be enjoyable, they want to be hooked but then they don't want to feel like the book like is hard to consume or hard to, to digest or hard to actually get through or anything like that so because of that I feel like like even the way he, he he's written the book it's like, you know, it's simple, it gets to the point, it, you know, raises questions, it raises, you know, like it, it pops in mysteries and it, it has loads of different kind of, kind of those kind of elements and stuff that keeps you hooked on the story but the story itself doesn't really kind of get overly convoluted or it doesn't really kind of you know drag itself on or go anywhere that it doesn't need to go um, and it definitely kind of opens up your imagination in so many different ways too so I feel like you know like even the show is kind of maybe paying respect to that too like like the book itself is not you know anything 
you know, grand, like, so to speak. Um, you know, and plus that stuff comes later. Like, this is only the first episode, so similar to, like, the first couple of chapters. Like, the first the, the, the first two, maybe even three chapters are, are really just more, like, set up. And from what I can remember, I think this definitely covered, like, maybe the first two chapters, you know? I think, I, I don't know if, if, like, you know, if they're going to title the episodes by chapters but then each episode is going to have like maybe two like at most of the chapters actually squeezed into it and stuff you know when you are adapting something like a book you have to kind of account for like like for how much is happening based on like how much is how much is actually happening versus how much is talked that is actually talked about because like, like like in, in the book like a lot of what you read is also describing the environment describing the scene and character interactions and internal like, like, like a lot of that like you, you 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 read all of that so you think that there's a lot going on but then when you actually see it happening on screen with this like a lot of it was fast paced and everything you know visually speaking not that much happens you account for the actual environment you account for the background you account for you know like um, all, all these different kind of kind of aspects and everything kind of coming together so because of that it flows really quickly so you know the scene like like you know, like the, the chapters in the book can flow quickly depending on how quickly you read them how quickly you process it and everything so yeah um but i feel like this actually ran like for like a, a quite a comfortable length and quite a comfortable pace and everything and, and it covered basically everything i remembered and the changes were, were were quite notable and quite noticeable and everything but you know i think i think there was really only one change that really kind of struck out to me that was like hmm that's interesting but then nothing really kind of seemed too far off or like you know unbearable um or anything like that so percy versus mrs dodds that one happened outside and it happened i mean i think the speed at which it happened doesn't bother me because even in the book it doesn't really have it, 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 it's like it, it's arguably the quickest battle in the book and and it, it's his first battle um you know quote unquote battle because again he, he he has no idea what's going on he has no clue what to do or what is happening he has no, he has no idea he, he's actually in a battle he thinks that he's you know literally about to die at the hands of his algebra teacher or something so you know in even in the book it's it's, it's like a paragraph at most and then it's, it's done and even then like, it's pretty much like the end of like a chapter or, or something i think or like close to the end of the chapter in the book she actually takes him inside the museum to one of the more kind of isolated exhibits so she can actually interrogate him and potentially kill him in silence and like like away from any witnesses or anything but with this one i think she most likely had the mist covering her i think so no humans know so i think she shoved one kid to the side but he looked behind him and didn't see anything there so but then she still did that outside she did that outside she transformed outside i think she was communicating with him telepathically and everything so only he saw the transformation vfx on her was so great too i think she 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 wore like all leather and i think i think she might have worn all leather in the books and everything but then her all leather transformed into those wings and even like her skin changing and everything as well so she's a fury the them i think there's like three of them i think like three or four of them my biggest surprise was it actually happening outside and stuff um but then it happening in front of prying eyes can be explained away by oh yeah she was covered by the mist and everything so yeah that was one change but and, and then i think the other change that got me arguably more surprisingly was grover um actually um ratting out percy and everything and, and, and like telling the headmaster that um you know, he, he talked about wanting to get back at Nancy Boba Fett and then even me like, oh, he pushed her into the fountain and all that kind of stuff. Like, as soon as he, as soon as he got going, and I think even Percy looked at him in, like, top 10 anime betrayals mode, like, dude, what the hell? So as, as soon as it started happening, I had a feeling that's what that's why he was doing it. But then Grover and, and Mr. Bonner do still kind of feel that it's, like, you know, like, it, it, it's in his best interest because of what he is, because of what's coming after him. Like, if they found him at Yancey, then there's literally no point keeping him at Yancey because then they're just going to send more and it's probably going to be even more dangerous and everything. So this changed, like, actually having Grover be the one to actually snake, like, to actually you know to tell tales on him and then actually you know get him kicked out because i think again like w w with the w with the the bet the close and like the best friendship that grover and percy is supposed to have i, di I didn't like uh, i wasn't sure exactly what to expect from actually driving that kind of a wedge between them so soon but i feel like i don't know maybe with the information that he doesn't know yet that's at hand i feel like maybe then it's like you know it it's really not that big of a deal like the 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 there's arguably bigger things to worry about than whether or not they're gonna be best friends and, and again chances are like he's gonna find a way to patch it up and he, he explains it all in the car anyway and you know i feel like like percy's kind of in that kind of state of mind where he's questioning so much but then he's also kind of being validated in his beliefs and it's a slightly more significant change in terms of you know character dynamics perhaps but then also one that's like not that much of like a dent and stuff and it's easily resolved in time anyway i do i, I do find the the setup of percy um having like the ability to look past the mist from a young age interesting like he was on the roof um because he, he can see through the mist he was on the roof and he he saw like a pegasus and everything and then he was in even in, in the cafeteria 
of his um, second grade um, school and everything. And he, he saw like, I think, I don't know exactly what it was. It, it, looked, it, looked, it looked like a rhino, but then it was also kind of glowing and it clearly had armor over it. So I don't know if it was like, 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 a, like a bronze armored like rhino or something. Um, and he even has like doodles of things. He has doodles of things I think he's seen. I think in, in, in one shot there was like a cyclops. And I mean, one shot showed that one rhino on the page, but then another shot showed like two pages just chock full of, of all sorts of doodles and sketches of things he's, I don't know if it's things he's seen or just other things that he knows of or something. But um, it, it's a cool setup to actually show, just like um, just to show what his power is and where he comes from and what he is to actually show that like, you know, he he can see through the mist and he can see things of the kind, especially at that age too. Again, kids are very much known to kind of be daydreamers and to believe in the magical and the mystical and fantastical and all that kind of stuff. And, 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 mytholo and, and mythology to kids w w would be something that they would absolutely indulge in and believe in. And, you know, like they'd use that as like an escape from reality. So he like, you know, like, like a kid of that age kind of being like, I saw a flying horse or I saw a rhino in armor just rolling down the street or something like, you know, like no one really would really kind of believe that or anything. So Mr. Brunner, um, we, we, we had Mr. Brunner in this so season. He was cool. I don't recognize the actor for him, but you know, I think we we also didn't really get that much of him. I don't think. I mean, we 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 got like a couple of scenes here and there, like enough to establish that he 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 was you know Mr. Bonner. He was the one of the kind of stand-in teachers at like um well I say stand-in teachers, but he was one of the teachers at Yancey, and he he looked at he he always looked out for Percy the same way that Mrs. Dodds looked out for Nancy Boba Fett and everything. I can't remember if you gave him the exact same pen. I feel like I, I think it, it, it may as well it may as well have been yeah. Because thing I think I, I I do remember when he gave him it again later down the line. I think Percy did recognize it as the same pen that he used to kill Mrs. Dodds and everything. So yeah, but I think um with this one I think he he gave it to him maybe somewhat early. He just gave it to him randomly. But I think I feel I feel like it, I think maybe in 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 the book I think he actually Mr. Brunner and. Grover w w were both almost immediately present when Mrs. Dodds made her fury presence kind of visible and and, and and made herself present as a fury and everything. So, like, um, they were both there and he tossed him the pen and, you know, clicked it off and everything. So, but even the v the VFX for the pen and everything, too, um, lo looked absolutely great and everything, like the way it transforms and, you know, it being like an actual, like, um, like you have to take the cap off, like you have to take the actual lid off and everything, as opposed to it just being a click and, like, click, click, like, click and morph and everything. So... Yeah, um, I feel like, I mean, I, I say he gave it to him early, but I feel like it, it happens around the same time in the books. Anyway, I think did this just is like a kind of like a more like a it, this is kind of slightly just more random, I think, because then he, he broke his pencil. He, he broke his pencil. So I think um, he was actually writing the answers on the quiz and then he actually broke his pencil. And then I think to replace that, he gave him the pen. So, yeah, I guess that, that's maybe not that, that much of a change. But yeah, but then, I mean, I don't know how he actually knew to take the pen out, like to actually kill Mrs. Dodds, you know? Like, like, cause I mean, well, we've seen that Riptide like vibrates whenever there's danger. So I feel like it, it, if they're implementing that as like a new kind of mechanic type thing for the pen, like maybe it, it vibrates whenever there are monsters near or wherever there's danger near, you know, um, that could be like a cool kind of thing to add, like, like, like a, a cool kind of alert, like, like, especially going forward into, into the story, if he's like out in the world and in like a seemingly harmless kind of place, but then the, but then the pen starts vibrating, then we know, oh, like something's about to go down and everything. So like when the Minotaur appeared, I think the pen started vibrating and when, when Mrs. Dodds was there, the pen started vibrating, so then he, he kind of knew to take the cap off, and then it definitely felt like a subconscious thing. But but even as I was reading the book, I think the first time I tried to read the book, I did somewhat automatically imagine the cast from the movie, like Logan Lerman and um, Alexandra Daddario and the guy who plays Grover and everything. I, I did imagine them j j just because for back then, like that was the only kind of live action performances we had, so their faces automatically kind of took took place of the characters and everything. But now reading this, now like reading this for the past few weeks and everything, um, I've been uncontrollably imagining Walker Scoble and 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 Leah Savar Jeffries and and Arian Simhadra, like like imagining their faces in like in place of Percy and Annabeth and Grover and everything. Actually, just imagining them being the characters even in the book so fluidly and it really does not feel any different watching the show like it actually really feels like him like walker really is percy he's bringing the, the, this boy to life this character to life this character with all these different kind of with, with this kind of history and with all these different kind of problems in his head and all these different kind of problems that he sees in himself and you know him stepping into this world and then discovering what he is and who he is and everything he feels so fluidly and so concretely percy and you know, the same goes easily for for, for Ari and too. Like, 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 both of them kind of really do seem to have that kind of friendship um, 
kind of like aspect and name like even with the the um the sudden kind of quote unquote betrayal of like Ari of um Ari, of Grover getting him kicked out of school and everything even with that it's like you know you you see it's clear like you know he did it like for for, for his safety in this one episode he, he he really did manage to actually kind of bring Percy to life as this kid who's got this whole world and this whole journey ahead of him and he kind of you know like um captures that whole kind of my world's getting turned upside down and then splintered off into different pieces kind of vibe so kind of fluid like like, like there, there's so much going on that he you know it feels like like he he, he genuinely like that doesn't really know exactly what to keep track of or how to keep track of it Percy being ADHD and dyslexic too like like you know like him even talking to his mother uh, and the stuff and being like you know, like there's something very wrong with my brain I'm broken there's you know like there's a lot of shit going on that I, I, I just don't understand I can't understand it keeps getting me in trouble like that like his, his journey in the books as that kind of a kid too like him not knowing what's wrong with like knowing what's wrong with him but then also just not knowing what's wrong with him and just like like having that kind of internal conflict with himself you know it's it's it's, it's an incredibly relatable and incredibly really well kind of um well displayed and well explored kind of, kind of well explored kind of journey for him to have like even even besides from it being explained away as like you know um him being like a demigod him literally just not being fully human but then like that giving him certain kind of advantages in the half-blood world that you know like are, are kind of considered more kind of disadvantages in, in the human world and everything too but then it's showing that like his experience with it hasn't really been that different like it, it doesn't suddenly make things like like that much better like, like it means that he can function like differently on a different like um in, in like a different kind of you know field of reality if you will like he's like you know he's he's not necessarily unfit for the human world because again even if he was in the human world he he, he it would just be adhd and dyslexia and, and dyslexia like that that wouldn't make anyone unfit to interact with the real world or anything like that but then it just means that he's actually much better fit for the half-blood world and everything so yeah but even the way that they, they, they kind of portrayed that and they kind of explored that and everything felt really real and, and really well done so and sally as well sally jackson like she is just uh she is a mother she is a mother and an mvp of being a mother she just like she like it, it's so clear to fit to be able to actually feel her love for percy and the things that she's willing to do for percy and her devotion to percy and her devotion to keeping percy safe and everything and the shit she puts up with at home with smelly ass gabe you know i even smelly gabe i think and, you know, like, Smelly Gabe seems, you know, pretty accurately kind of casted and, and portrayed and everything. Like, he's he's a... he He's an abusive bastard, for one thing. That, that's true. But then he's also... Just, like, he, he does fuck all at home. This feels more like a product of its time type of thing, maybe. Like, in, in, in the book, he actually plays, like, real-life active poker with the cards and everything, with um, Eddie, the building manager, and then one of his other friends. But with this one, he's on his laptop playing online poker. So I think now almost every game out there has been... Like, even chess, like, you can be played online now so like, almost every game out there has been digitized and put on the internet so you can play it like on your computer like from wherever you want and everything you don't actually need to buy the set so maybe that's like i mean i don't think i mean I, I don't think they've actually changed the time period in which the story takes place but maybe actually kind of you know changing some aspects like that to fit like a more modern time and to kind of change things up that way too you know um eddie actually seemingly has like an actual problem with him you know, like she, like um, he he actually like kind of seems like less able to tolerate Gabe, and and actually seems to to to, to actually do his job a bit a bit more and, and, a bit, and a bit more kind of effectively as opposed to just kind of sitting around playing kind of cards with him and everything. So that seems like a another change. Um, but yeah, but no, like um, Sally Jackson. Yeah, again, I'll say I've said I said it once. Um, Sally Jackson, she deserves so much better. She deserves way better you know i mean arguably even arguably even poseidon isn't really you know if we're fit if, if, if we're talking about it then arguably even even poseidon isn't really all that um all, all, all that fit to be with her but sally jackson she puts up with so much on a day-to-day basis and she you know everything she does is for percy and everything she does is to make sure that he's safe and that he's protected and, and that you know the mother and son relationship like that they have in the books so it's, it's like see, seeing that so kind of so effortlessly and so flawlessly translated onto here like you know um i'm not i'm not, not entirely sure of the of the actress who plays her but i think the, 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 they casted her really well they casted her really freaking well like she also i think she's like right off the bat even even with gabe too like she, she had she definitely really has like um even like like all, like all things considered all, all the shit that he puts her through considered like she 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 she, she still manages to maintain 
that kind of take no shit kind of attitude and everything, um, which I think is actually really kind of strong to see because I think she definitely is, is a victim of abuse, but then she, I think she, 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 she's not someone to really necessarily kind of cower under that fear, so to speak, you know, at least not entirely. So seeing her right off the bat here actually make, like, actually, you know, talking back to Gabe and actually being able to correct him and correct his speech and actually get him to talk like, and actually rephrase things politely and everything. I mean, arguably, it's also because Percy is there and everything, so it, even if he was going to do something, he just wouldn't want to do it in, in, in front of Percy or anything like that. But then even still, actually seeing... I think I think, I think think that actually is something that actually makes it even more poignant too, actually seeing Percy and Sally have the strength that she needs in front of Percy. Because again, Sally being Sally, she would want to be strong for him. She wouldn't want to look strong for him. She wouldn't want him to have to worry about her. So, But, but, but then Percy being there, being all that she needs to actually have the strength to talk back and to, you know, make her stand and to actually get him to do something for once... Um, is also like a like like a very strong kind of stance to make and a very 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 accurate kind of portrayal of, of um what she's capable of doing too like everything again everything she does is for her son and everything so yeah Sally in this too um yeah I think she even like um like um she she even took him to the museum when he was younger I think presumably in, in the second grade too and she told him the story of his namesake of Perseus and how him and his mother were rocked out to see and everything but even actually actually telling him stories as a kid of the greek gods and of perseus and of, of the 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 all the things i like even like she, she raised him on the stories of um of where he came from and everything to make sure that by the time he was old enough he would actually have some kind of base level understanding of all those people so yeah, so he, he wouldn't be walking into camp half blood completely kind of flabbergasted by any of this stuff or Anything like that, but then him uh, telling him like, "Oh, you're the you're, you're the son of a god," and he's like, "You're like you you fell in love with a god, like Jesus. You fell in love with Jesus, like 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 he she mentions gods, and and Jesus is the first one, like like not like let alone Christianity, but then Jesus is the first one, you know. Um, he thinks. I mean, watching her kind of die um a second time was not even remotely appealing, not even remotely, you know. Um, the Minotaur fight was much longer, because I think, I think he, he, even in the book, I think the, the, the Minotaur being, like, a much, much more, you know, rel again, even Grover saying, like, you know, it's relentless and it's brutal, it's much worse than Mrs. Dodds. It makes sense that, that that one would actually go for much longer and everything. But, yeah, I think um, that one, it, it literally, I think even watching that fight, it actually did feel like actually rem remembering the way that Percy described um, his own actions and his own kind of thought process and everything in the books and everything. Thing too so that one was longer but also like it still kind of got down to the point and you know and again the the, the vfx for the for the, for the for the minotaur as well seemed on point too and i think even um it was wearing pants too yeah i think i, I, I mean i don't i think i don't remember <laughs> remember that part of the books like the anything about them the minotaur actually wearing underwear or even actually having anything there that it would need to cover up for modesty's sake but you know um grover used to to show him the um myth of magic cards of like cards with like the minotaur and presumably other kind of greek greek kind of creatures and, and myths and everything so, so apparently that that was um part of grover's kind of training for him as well like getting him to recognize like different creatures and everything so not strictly calvin klein but just you know your cheap old tighty whities so um, yeah I, I don't know if, if, if it's just a fashion statement or if he actually does have anything down there worth covering up but you know either way it, it, it's a free world i suppose so he can wear whatever he wants um so yeah, but he he took down the mentor as well and actually made a dent, um, a strong enough dent in in the horn to be able to actually snap that horn off and keep it loud and proud as a trophy and everything so and we saw one glimpse of um percy's dreams as well like percy actually explained to his mother that, 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 that he's been daydreaming and he used to be daydreaming and, and when he was daydreaming he would he would see creatures and stuff walking around and everything but now it's more than that he's been having dreams like like he's out on the beach and it's stormy and there's like a voice out in the distance like like a deep grumbling voice kind of taunting him calling him a little hero and a weakling and, and all that kind of stuff telling him to run away so I felt like maybe that part I might I, I don't know I, I might not get too I might not get too deep into it and maybe you know I think I think one thing that I think it is kind of you know kind of great about this show is but it, it is especially that kind of benefit for like non book readers where it's like you know you get to kind of you know explore the story as it goes along you you get to see all the different kind of twists and turns and the mysteries of the show and all that kind of stuff as it unfolds and you get to see um, all the different kind of things it contains I think so, so some stuff I think you know like definitely even reading the books like you could tell it was building up to like a big 
bigger, bigger mystery and like something from, from much farther down the line. So that one I won't get too deep into, but knowing um, at least some aspect of what that is and, and what it leads down to, I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. And also, I'm also very intrigued to know that they're actually kind of setting that up this early because I think in, even in the book, it actually doesn't really happen. Actually, or actually, I think, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, well, they do develop it as it goes along. So it actually does get bigger and grander as it goes along. So I think, I think maybe, like, just, I think, I think maybe, I think, um, yeah, actually, I think it, it does happen once he reaches Montauk. I think it's actually once they reach Montauk and once they reach um, the cabin and everything and then Percy falls asleep there and then he starts having dreams and everything. So it actually, it, it does happen this early on, but in this one it happened when he was in the car. They got blue food, they brought blue food into this, they brought blue food. So I think, yeah, I think it's seeing that in the book, I think that seemed that, that seemed like a fun, like so, such a fun thing that like, you know, I mean... You know, again, like for all the things the movies missed out on, like that seemed like such a small yet fun thing that they just could have included just for the heck of it. But then, you know, I don't know. Like it, it, it seems like 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 even even for this, it's it's, it's like a literally, literally like a five second reference that, you know, it it just made me so happy to see. I think, I don't know if it was actually blueberries or if it was actually something else. Um, but yeah, I mean, like in the book, I think I think um I think it's like S S like S Sally and Gabe actually had like a like a quote unquote kind of argument about about whether or not blue food exists or not, and he was insistent and adamant that it doesn't, and she was adamant that it does. So instead of actually you know continuing to talk to a brick wall about it, you know, like all well, the human embodiment of one rather, um she actually went out of her way. I think I think I don't know if it was every day or just like 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 every kind of other week, like uh, any opportunity that that she got. Some of the blue food she got, I think I actually didn't know it could be blood. I think I, I didn't know you. You, you, you could get blue crisps or anything like that so yeah I think some blue food that may or may not exist I actually am surprised that it may exist so this was based more on like the explanation that Sally gave Percy in the cabin and everything it definitely felt like the explanations that they give for stuff in this um does seem slightly more blunt I think a, 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 a lot of the kind of like um, different kind of expositions they give and, and the expl and the explanations they give like the backstories and all the different kind of things that they give in this seems a lot more blunt and like a lot more kind of bluntly written but also somewhat blunt bluntly kind of delivered and everything so I, I wonder maybe if that's because like you know like in the book it, it definitely kind of feels more like they actually have the time and space to make it sound kind of mysterious and to actually lead into it and to make it sound more like an actual kind of like um like 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 an actual story being told but then in this it just feels more like an actual info dump it doesn't feel like wrong or bad or anything like that it definitely feels different but if, 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 i think it, it definitely again with this being an adaptation like with, with most if not all other adaptations they've definitely kind of made this with like a more open audience in mind like knowing that a lot of a lot will be presumably will, will be book readers and, and book lovers but then also like the other half will, will be people who either know about this or don't know about this but then either way they haven't read the book um so they don't know what to expect and, and they don't know how, like how, how much of the story they, they can expect to receive and everything so maybe for them you know not to be like condescending or anything but then it, it definitely feels like it like um it definitely feels like like a, a lot more like actually keeping things kind of simpler and maybe slightly more casual and also maybe just like like doing the best that they can within the time limits that they're given to like it, it, especially if if the actual episode itself minus the credits is only going to be maxing out at like 30 35 minutes then maybe then in that time what information can they give us that fits into adapting the first chapter into an episode and and, and, and what information can, can we actually actively relay to the audience in in that space too so and I will say I think one of my like more favored kind of aspects of the story and I think one thing that really kind of kept me going through the story as well was actually like um this story in itself pretty much being like like an entirely kind of first person account like everything is told from Percy's perspective, everything is like 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 everything he like like the, the story itself is everything that Percy sees and hears and every everyone and everything that he interacts with and everything. So it's pretty much like, like it's pretty much like almost in the form of like in like like a diary entry, if you will, you know, like kind of relaying like everything he sees and hears and everything. But then a lot of uh, the story too is like his internal monologue and everything, like like how he perceives stuff and how he responds to stuff mentally and like his internal monologue. So I think that was a huge part of like the story for me. Actually, actually seeing 
seeing his kind of internal responses to people, like his internal kind of like perceptions of people and like 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 how like like what they came across as to him and all that kind of stuff. So we did have that in the beginning, like the like the the um like the look I didn't want to be a half blood kind of opening speech, like that one being adapted from the book as well. So, you know, I I, I don't imagine that they'll be able to actually squeeze in internal monologues like like randomly. Like this is this isn't really like Dexter or anything where you can just kind of have his internal monologue pop up at different points. It would be cool if he could like maybe like if, if they could find a way to actually fit that in without breaking the flow or anything like that but then i think uh, but then at the same time like, i kind of wonder like maybe if, if something like that is better kind of suited to keep in the book or maybe it's like the episodes open up with an internal monologue but then the rest of the episode is just him and i think maybe it actually kind of gives like walker himself like 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 a chance to actually kind of express himself kind of creatively and uh, express himself as an actor if like you know he actually is having those internal monologues in his head but then that's only conveyed like facially and emotionally and everything like that so either way like how, however it happens I'm, I'm good with it but so those are all my uh, thoughts for episode number one so now we move on to episode number two of the season so yeah let's go Annabeth hey Annie how are you doing you drool when you sleep <laughs> <laughs> yep Okay. I need to get that shirt. I really, I, yeah. I, I, I need that shirt. I need that shirt. Did you see what happened to my mom? I did. I'm sorry. For everything. Your job was to get me here alive. Your job was done. <sighs> Where are you going? Was is it Mr. D? Is that Mr. Is that Jason Mansukas? Is he Mr. D? Please tell me that's Mr. D. That has to be Excuse Mr. Me? D. He's got the diet I'm coke. That's Mr. That. <laughs> that's, that's Mr. D. That's Mr. D. Peter Johnson is here. <laughs> okay, that isn't really my name. Uh, Mr. D. Camp Mr. Right D. Mr. D. This is. <laughs> yeah, Grover. Chase. First time. What did you? <laughs> Jason Mansukis. The D is for Dionysus. Di oh Dionysus, not Dionysus. Yeah, Dionysus. What do you mean Dionysus? Like God of wine. God, yes. Son. Dad? Yes, Peter. <laughs> oh, exactly. God. Now, before <gasps> we get to know each other. <laughs> what kind of shit is he gonna pull? In the galley. There is a bottle Ugh. of 1985 Gato. <sighs> you go fetch that for me, Mr. D. Even if Percy uh, uh, was uh, uh, Grover, quiet. <laughs> this is a nice moment. Don't ruin it. Ah, oh, Kyron. Oh, yeah, the center. Mr. Kyron, Mr. Bruner, the center. Mr. Bruner. Uh, Mr. Bruner's real name. Mr. Bruner. Is I keep saying Mr. Bruner. This must be a lot for you to process. Oh, no, it's it's fine. I mean, you're a horse. <laughs> my father won't talk to me unless I get a drink. Well, this all seems to <laughs> No, no, no. Mr. D is not your father. I could be. Yes, but are you? <laughs> Why must you ruin everything? <laughs> Mr. D knows that Zeus has forbidden him from consuming alcohol. <laughs> the gods are able to do things for gods that gods are forbidden to do for themselves. Mr. Yeah. D was taking advantage of that. So he can't drink it, but he could get Percy to get it for him, but then will he still be able to drink it? I gotta say, Dionysus is perfectly cast. Yeah, he's what pretty success? perfectly cast. You got the boy to camp alive. Great care was taken to bring you here. And great sacrifice. I lost your pen sword thingy. Hopefully that wasn't your only one. Check your pocket. It comes back. No matter where it goes, it always comes back. Unless you surrender it, it will always find its way back to you. Say hello to Riptide, she's here to stay. Twelve cabins. The twelve the Olympian cabins, gods. whoa, they're big. They're big. They're bigger than I imagined them. Is home. To the children. Demeter, Hephaestus, Athena. Great, which one am I? Your father might claim you tomorrow. It, it might be next week. It, it might be... Never. Even now, he still wants nothing to do with me. 
<sighs> Hermes, god of travelers. Mm -hmm. His cabin is home to both his own children and the unclean. Yeah. <sighs> Comfort food. I'm Luke. Percy. Whoa. Wood nymphs. Those are wood nymphs, aren't they? You've been picking at them again. Yeah. You're too hard on yourself, Grover. You always have been. Just be truthful. Okay. Is this where satyrs go? Is this like a home for the satyrs? I don't think Grover. I think because I think, I think satyrs don't really have cabins because uh, they're satyrs. Yeah, I think this 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 must be the place for the satyrs, yeah, wouldn't it? Satyrs and wood nymphs, maybe. Sorry to interrupt. Is now an okay time to talk? No. Yes. <laughs> It's Sally Jackson. I've never seen a Minotaur crush a human to death, but I just, I assume that they'd get really squishy or something, or like, like an old banana, maybe. Grover. But she evaporated. So I, I went to the Cloven Council and they had actually heard of this The Cloven before. Council, yeah. And that when a mortal is really close to death, Hades himself can actually reach out and- Yes, we know. There are powerful forces at work here, boy. Forces that have laid waste to the earth before and are close to doing it again. So you don't want to lie to your little friend? <sighs> Too bad. You will say nothing to him about this. Do you understand? Where is he? How far out is he? Was he having another dream? I left you here. Yeah, he's having another dream. Left you with nothing. You want what's been taken from you. Justice! Mm -hmm. In the daydreams, in ADHD, and dyslexia, demigods just process reality differently than humans do. Mm. For the first time in your life, you're just like everyone else. Demigods have always fought for glory. They used to call it Kleos. Attaches itself to your name, makes it bigger. Power. Yeah, Names have power. People listen closer when you talk. Mm. Oh. oh, hey. Knock it off, Clarice. Clarice! Ooh, Clarice LaRue. Hello. <laughs> so this is the kid who killed the Minotaur. Look, you want attention around here, dummy? You better be ready for it when it comes. Nancy Boba Fett 2.0. <laughs> mm hmm. Of the Ares cabin. Ares kids. They come by it honestly. Why don't they mess with you? They know better. You can't force the gods to do anything. Well, yeah, but it would make it harder for them to pretend I don't exist, right? Maybe. Mm. Well, great. Where do we start? Mm. <laughs> I wouldn't. Oh, a flaming arrow. Oh. Doesn't have to be flaming, does it? Just have to hit the target. Oh god, how badly is he gonna miss this? Oh! Oh Jesus, okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Not archery, not blacksmithing. Is there a okay. Greek god of disappointment? <laughs> they like the smell of burnt mac and cheese. They like the smell of begging. <laughs> mm. You burn what you'll miss the most. Then they know you really mean what you're about to say, so they listen. Mm. Kind of like a prayer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the blue food. Mm. I don't know if I'm doing this right. I hope you can hear me. Is Hades going to hear him? Because that's who she's with, right? Is Hades going to hear him? I've made some friends here. Like, real friends. And they might really like me. Ignoring me is one thing, but he doesn't get to ignore you. Hmm. I'm gonna make him come down here. I'm gonna make him see me. Can't sleep, huh? <sighs> Every new kid shows up here and they think they're special. Tell me you made it all up about the Minotaur, and I'll let you He has a horn in his bedroom. Where the fuck do you think he got that? 
Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, incoming. Oh, yeah. Three very perfectly directed spouts. I can explain. No, you can't. Okay. Uh. I'm Annabeth. Yes, are you, you are. Me, Annabeth? You absolutely are. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Why? Well, I've been waiting to see if something like this would happen. So I'd know if you can help me. Help you do what? Win capture the flag. Capture the flag. Before camp, I was on the road. Me and a forbidden kid I met along the way. Her name is Thalia. And what does that mean, forbidden? Thalia? Not a long Thalia? time ago, Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades agreed their children were becoming too powerful, so they made a pact. And it held for a long time until Zeus broke that pact. Until Thalia. Thalia. The forbidden kid attracts trouble. Annabeth is the strongest warrior in camp. The only way left to prove my herself girl. is to go on a quest. Um, what does this have to do with me? Chiron's been promising her for years. As always, there will be no maiming and no killing. I trust these rules. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's already, yeah, doesn't like that rule. Any... Maybe I won't even need a sword. Let the games begin! I'm gonna need a sword. Uh -huh. <laughs> now you, sunshine. You're with me. Oh, she called him sunshine. <laughs> We're one step below seaweed brain, but we'll get there. We will get there. We gonna get there. Did you trip over that, really? I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> but I appreciate you, you know, I, I get it. Okay, you, you're better at this than me. But I need this to go well today. Hmm. You still don't get where you fit into all this, do you? Capture the flag or the camp half blood? The cat. The what? The invisibility cap. Gift from my mom. Yeah. Don't worry. You'll do great. Do great? Do what? Great. Oh, I love that. I love that. The Yankee cap. Percy's on it. When it's time, he's going to be ready. I know it. <laughs> He's just flossing, standing there, shield down, helmet down, just flossing. And pissing, flossing and pissing. <laughs> oh, is this Clarice? It's Team Red. Flags that way, it's not here. We know. Yeah, glory's fine. Revenge is more fun. Yeah, I'll bet. Whoa! Oh, electric spear! Electric spear! No maiming. It's like the one rule. Yeah, I guess I'll lose deserve privileges for a while. Uh, That's a cool looking spear, though. That's a really cool looking spear. Oof! Oh, jeez. Oh! 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 Gosh. I just want you to admit you're a fraud. Are you feeling up to that yet? <laughs> Guess it's a no. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> oh jeez. That is you're going after him with the pointy and that seems like it would kill him. Oh. Oh. Oh, <laughs> nice tuck and roll. He's decent at battle. He is actually, he's admittedly decent at battle. Oh. 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 Oh, he broke it. Oh, he broke it. Oh, he broke it. Oh, he broke it. Oh, no. Daughter of Ares, very pissed. And they captured the flag. Yep. While Clarice was busy with Percy, they captured the flag. Not bad, hero. Oh, she's, uh, okay. 
Listen. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, yeah, this is... What is wrong with you? Yeah, this is how they need to find out. Healing. Aquatic healing. I don't understand. Oh, there it is. There it is. You have been claimed by Poseidon. Earthshaker. Stormbringer. Percy Jackson. Son of Poseidon. Of the Sea God. As a forbidden child of the Sea God. That's a good looking you are cabin for Poseidon. Amongst demigods. Zeus is looking for a thief. Sees a forbidden child claimed by his jealous brother. It doesn't look good for you, kid. Mm. I didn't do anything. If he doesn't return the boat by the summer solstice in one week, there will be war. As deadlines go, that's pretty fucking tight. That is a crunch. That is a fucking crunch. A quest crunch. A crunched quest. There is a third brother who has always deeply resented them both. Hades. Hades. Poseidon has claimed you. This is his will. Poseidon has ignored me my entire life. You are his son. I am Sally Jackson's son. Who's Sally Jackson? She's the one who got herself killed so that I could be safe here. The fate of the world hangs in the balance. You will accept this quest. I won't. Hey, everybody. You... <laughs> now is not the time. <laughs> Sally Jackson is alive. This would get him to accept the quest. It this is the like only died, way to get him to accept the quest. Way. Grover. Your mother was stolen by Hades. He won't he accept the quest otherwise. In the underworld. Yeah, this is the only way. Where they want you to go to. <clears throat> I think you can bring her back. Yeah. When do we leave? Mm hmm <laughs> Oh, gosh, gosh. Oh, gosh, gosh. Okay, is there a next time thing for this too? I'm not gonna watch any next times for this. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna risk watching any next time previews. For this i think there is one yeah i'm not gonna watch it um but yeah damn that was oof that was good that was wowza yeah okay yeah that one i think i don't know if that just if that just seemed longer or if it just actually packed in so much more than the previous one i think the previous one i think didn't really have much besides from the museum trip then going home or then kicked out then going home then then Montauk and then the Minotaur stuff. I think I think the, the, the first one seemed quite short. So I think I'm, I'm, I think I, I think pe people watching this, yeah, I don't think actually would have been glad to actually have both episodes as opposed to just being stuck with the one that was like a slightly tamer kind of, you know, like a, a still pr slightly tame episode for a premiere. But with this one, you know, this one actually established like the world of, of the Half Bloods and the camp and you know that kind of culture and everything, um, what they're all about and how they get along or how they don't get along sometimes and just yeah it, it just seemed so much more like you know like that they, they were actively trying to introduce even Percy and us as the audience into this world as well so they did a great job in that aspect so yeah I gotta say like <laughs> Jason Matsukas as Dionysus I think is just when I see him I typically see Adrian Pimento from Brooklyn Nine-Nine and honestly he's not that different in that one I think in that one he does still have like a like a, like a somewhat similar kind of attitude and everything but I think in that one he, he I think it, it, it's, it's quite minor and it only really happens in one episode but he also does have like a similar kind of attitude where he really doesn't care for kids and he doesn't care about kids or anything um so in this one yeah I think that's like just like right off the bat like he seems like he's he can't be asked to be there like it's like, like, like being the the camp director is more of like a punishment for him at the hands of Zeus than the, than it is like an actual job <laughs> like that especially like his more explicit punishment being that he can't actually get alcohol so I mean he was still gonna get Percy to go and get alcohol for him so I don't know if he actually just can't get it himself or if he actually can't drink it at all um because then even then he, he, he just drinks the Pepsi and stuff so yeah I think him calling him <laughs> Peter Johnson <laughs> instead is pretty pretty apt to so I'm also kind of somewhat realizing that I'm actually kind of um, pronouncing like like uh, like mispronouncing some names or like 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 um, I, I, I I thought it was Dion Dionysus but it's actually Dionysus and I think um, 
Luke said Thalia, but I think I think even in the movie, I think I think the, I think even in the Sea of Monsters movie, I think they did say Talia. I think I've always known the name Talia to be pronounced as Talia, you know. So I've never heard it pronounced as, as Thalia. So I, I, I'm kind of curious as to how many other kind of gods name. Because I think it's not really until you hear these names out loud that you know how to pronounce them. But then you go for so like you. But then you don't always get the chance to hear these names said out loud immediately after you actually read about them or find out about them. So it's like you, you can easily go for years, as I have saying names in your head one way like in a way that seems like it makes sense but then you hear someone say it out loud and it's like okay wow i've been mispronouncing that my entire life so poseidon i, I knew that medusa i knew that i think zeus i think i think i always, always said zeus so i think yeah i think yeah i think i always did say zeus i think athena hades i think i, I think I, I used to call it hades and not hades I, thought, I, thought, I, thought, I think i used to think it was hades um i think when i first read it and then I think um, Aphrodite, I used to say Aphrodite, I didn't know there was the E, I did not say the E, I think I, 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 I used to say it as um, Aphrodite and everything, and then it was Aphrodite. I used to, I think I used to say Apollo as Apollo, because <laughs> I think I, I, cause I, think I, I used to associate it kind of like with the, um, with, with the polo mints and things, so I used to say Apollo instead of Apollo. So yeah, again, I, 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 I feel like again, like you know, I haven't even watched the movies in a long time. So now watching this and think, think seeing random gods pop up and and then, you know, um, hearing their names said out loud to you, I'm gonna learn how to pronounce them at, like in 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 real life um, for the first time properly as well. So I think most names I've got and other names not so much. So. Yeah, um, it's gonna be a journey. Camp Half Blood just screams like on location. I mean, yeah, I think they they can still go on location and actually still use like blue screens or something. I think I think blue screens are for, like outside, like when they still go on location, but they set up like blue screens to expand the environment for like within the actual visual kind of kind of program and everything. So they can still kind of have it in a field, but then expand like like in CGI, they can actually expand the field to have buildings in the distance. Or I always imagined the cabins to be like um like what the cabin in Mon Montauk would be, but maybe. Be just kind of slightly bigger and more like area like not bigger as in higher and taller but like just bigger as in more spread out and there were more rooms and everything but I, I thought it would be like a literal kind of ca like a like a like a cabin in the woods type cabin but with this one it looks like an actual miniature kind of like a temple like it's even got the like each one has the columns and everything and i think in the books i think from what i can remember actually um each cabin does have its own unique design in accordance with the gods too like it actually it has its own decorations and, and some of the decorations actually change according to the time of day like in the night it, like some of them like one of the cabins i think has decorations, decorations that like shimmer yeah, at night in the dark and everything but then in, in the daytime it looks like a different kind of texture or whatever so each cabin is decorated specifically in accordance to its god and their kind of attributes and their kind of culture and everything the cabins i think do look like different colors but i think for the most part they, they all kind of do look like somewhat the same and everything so i guess maybe production didn't really kind of allow for them to go all out or anything like that which i think again i think i think uh, I, that, that, that that's not really something i have like the biggest kind of gripe with or anything i think that they have the symbols and i think they have different colors and that they have like different kind of things still being unique identifiers and everything so that, that still seems cool some of the cabins are like unattended completely like there are no kids in there like claimed or otherwise so they i think it actually kind of looks like um dead inside because like no one's using it so like all the beds and stuff are like Turf furniture just flipped over and covered up with tops and it just looked really depressing but then other cabins are like basically teeming with life because then all the kids are in there and they've been claimed and they're hanging out and stuff so but yeah the, the Hermes cabin is the cabin for his kids and the unclaimed kids so I think with Hermes with, well, with him being like the god of travelers the god of the kind of highway and like him kind of assisting travelers and assisting kind of people who who need aid and everything but I think he he is also like a messenger of the gods too so I think he I think I think for, for that like like tra travel and traveling is kind of incorporated in his kind of routine if you will so I think because of that it's like you know I think, I think that then kind of makes him the most fit to actually kind of harbor and, and like provide shelter for, for even the kid, the kids who are kind of traveling like, 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 like even once they reach Camp Half Blood like they are traveling through time until they get uh, until they get claimed by a god or goddess if ever or anything like that so that I think I think the, the, that was something I actually kind of appreciated about the camp kind of culture but I think it, it was kind of nice to see like I mean, even like like from the start like like Percy kind of questioning the gods and like their kind of culture of ignorance and their culture of like actually ignoring like like uh, of ignorance and of like um of neglect 
and everything because like in the story that is such a huge kind of thing that they ponder over and such a huge issue that they actually kind of act, show active distrust in and, and and show it as like a reason that the, that the kids often have like active active kind of distrust in the gods and their ways and, 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 and their kind of even active participation in like anything seeing Percy actually being shown to actually have like an, like an active like, 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 like actually like, like a growing distrust in that from the beginning is I think is such a really kind of you know huge and, 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 and like um, important and refreshing thing to see because it, it kind of shows like how far he's willing to go um but then also like 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 it being in his self interest or in the people we, in, in the self in, in the interest of the people he cares about versus in the interest of the greater good because I think he does believe in the greater good but then I think he believes that, like in the greater good of actually saving people and saving the ones he cares about and not specifically in, in serving the god's interest and everything um, like as shown in, in the very end too like like he he absolutely refused to go on the quest and, and refused to even leave Camp Arflor or go anywhere in the underworld until he learned that his mother was still alive and that his mother was actually being held by Hades in the underworld and everything, because then now he finally has a reason, a reason to go, but a reason he believes, and so he is again. He is a boy with a heart of gold, and he 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 is loyal to a fault, and he he loves to a fault and everything, but then. You know, like that love, to like like that that care and that compassion he has for his mother and for the people that he will grow to care about. Like that is the reason he will fight. He won't fight for the gods. He won't. He, he's 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 never gonna be their little errand boy. He, he even recognizes that like um you know Poseidon didn't even bother claiming him until now. Like I think I think that wouldn't have shown up unless he was in the water. But then even even then even without that like. Poseidon only actually is claiming him as his son because he needs him to to, to, to actually complete this quest, to complete this mission, to do this, you know. So I, I, I mean, I mean, if, if they, I mean, I will probably wait, like, and like, like, see, see if they can actually kind of like explore that stuff later on down the line, and then go into it a bit more. But yeah, I think this is like an actual nice start to kind of show, like, did like Percy's journey of actually seeing what the gods are really about, what they can and can't do, but then also what they choose to do and choose or not and choose not to do and everything, like stakes aside and everything, you know. Um, Assuming we do get to see a bit more of him at Camp Half Blood in the next episode, I think we'll, 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 we'll presumably get to see a bit of it, like how that affects his time at Camp Half Blood now that he's been claimed. Now everyone knows who, who his father is and everything, and he's one of the big three as well. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of see like exactly how that kind of affects his time there if they actually manage to show it. And the bathroom incident too. So yeah, that was um, you know. Yeah, I think the one the one thing they changed about that was that Annabeth didn't get wet. Yeah, um, at, at least in this one, I, I, Annabeth actually didn't get wet. She she, she 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 was in the doorway. I think I mean she was there long enough to witness what Percy's action with the water and everything. So I think that's what then like like witnessing that was what then prompted her to push him in. Because then she 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 had to know it, it, um, on the one hand she had to know if he was the special demigod, but then also, you know, seeing him working with the water like that actually made him made her want to you know to, to test out if he really was the son of who he uh, of who she thought he was the son of and everything so then that prompted her to push him in the water she didn't admit that she was talking him, but then she, 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 she was observing him in that time seeing what he was what he was capable of what he could be and everything so yeah oh god leah leah as annabeth oh i am here for it i am here for it that is she that girl has annabeth chase written all over her face she has annabeth written all over her face and right off the bat right from the get-go she she has i think she had i feel like she has a take no shit attitude com com comparable to sally jackson she has a take no shit attitude and, and like a, 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 a such a sternness and like a like a like a con like like she she is as like i think honestly all these like the, 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 this trio is as equally as concrete as each other like walker is pretty concrete as percy um arian is as con it, it, it is concrete as grover and annabeth is as bloody concrete as as annabeth i i i don't want to imagine anyone else playing these characters but i also just can't like the, the, these actors all have like just just like you know i mean we haven't even had the pleasure of actually seeing them together yet but at the same time it's like i, I actually can't wait to see them together I, I i i enjoy them individually like so much right now that i actually can't wait to see them leave camp and actually set off on this quest and actually have that time spent together battling monsters at every corner and actually getting closer and closer to the truth and actually you know be becoming the destined trio that i know they can be and they're actually seeing them go through everything together oh god it's gonna be so good it's gonna be so fucking good um but yeah annabeth as um and she, she she even has the actual the 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 yankee cap the invisibility cap and everything like as it's, it's a gift from her mother and everything so i mean they haven't yet actually clarified that she is the daughter of athena so i i, I do look forward to that kind of um that she is in fact the daughter of athena so because then it is well explored in the story that like um poseidon and, and athena have their own have their own fair share 
history of issues and everything. So seeing how that kind of affects Percy and, and, and Annabeth going forward is going to be a really interesting kind of thing to see. So Chiron told her that like one day a demigod would come to camp with a quest that even Chiron could not deny and like an undeniable, unstoppable kind of quest and everything. And that would be the quest that Annabeth would get to go on. So I mean, it wouldn't be her quest, it would be Percy's quest, but then, but then that would be the quest that like um she would get to accompany him on and everything. So don't know in, in, like if at some point in the actual books or anything she actually gets to, to get her to, to actually lead her own quest but you know I feel like she, especially after reading the first book she, she deserves to she, she's as as fit and as strong as any of them to actually, actually be able to, to be able to lead her own quest and everything so th- I think that that's why like, like every new kid that comes through she kind of observes them and stalks them to see if they are really if they're really all that and if they are actually really made of anything special to be able to do that so again I can't wait to see more of Annabeth I really can't wait to see Leah she already seems to do something a great job on her and I can't wait to see where she gets to go from here both individually and um, cooperatively with um, Ari and, and Walker as their respective characters and everything so and we also had Luke we had Luke the son of Hermes so not going to get too deep into what he's all about but I think, I think so far I think they are kind of building him up to be like this actual friendly voice and like the actual um you know like he, he I think he also see he also does seem to have like a somewhat of like an actual authoritativeness about him like he actually does like kind of lead calls on the other campers and you know be they children of Hermes or not just ch- just children of the Hermes cabin claimed or unclaimed you know he does seem to have like like some actual solid kind of leadership kind of qualities to him and everything so that seems pretty well played and when and, and, and well executed and everything and he seems again to, to, to be like an actual friendly face compared, compared to Clarice like Clarice just seems like you know she's she definitely the daughter of Ares and definitely steadfast and stubborn in her kind of righteousness and, and in her anger and in her quest to prove herself like no matter what happens but then like Luke actually seems to be the one guiding Percy around and showing him the different kind of things to do and different like like the, the actual ways to actually you know prove himself and everything so he actually tried like a bunch of different things like archery and blacksmithing and other things but you know nothing actually worked out in the books um you know the only thing that I, I, I think from what I can remember I think the only thing that actually worked out for him was canoeing but that wasn't really that much of like an actual like at least like for, for, from his perspective that wasn't really that much of a battle worthy kind of you know thing to be good at so they also have kind of a, kind of slightly explored the concept of power to the name and everything because I think um one thing they did establish in the books that is that names have power like even saying a name can have power like actually the mere mention of a name can add power to um, a god's name it can potentially even actually anger them or summon them or actually going kind to of bring some kind of reaction from them or something said so like names have power but I think in this one they are taking more time to establish that like um glory is also what kind of brings power to to a name like a, like, like a, a name being involved in battle a name being in like like being involved in a battle and actually achieving glory and then that glory being attached to that name forever and actually bringing more notoriety and more honor and more kind of visibility to um, to, to to that name and uh, and to that kind of like actually like building up like a, almost like a legacy if you will so like Perseus like you know like a, I mean Percy's namesake is Perseus who already has the glory of having beheaded Medusa and everything you know and stuff so he already has that and now even Percy has gone and dehorned the the Minotaur as well, and he even has the actual horn to keep behind as like an actual trophy and everything. So, yeah, um, and of course on on camp, like you know, like um, the more glory you have to your name, the more like the the the, the, the less likely people are to mess with and everything. So Clarice, I mean, yeah, I mean the same way. Like um, Luke seems to be the kind of kind of like the kind of tribal leader for Hermes. I think Clarice definitely kind of is the tribal leader for for the Ares cabin too, being kind of arguably the most kind of noble and and, and like um no notable kind of kind of daughter of Hermes. And Clarice also seems to also seems to be very very kind of aptly presented to be almost like the actual like um Nancy Boba Fett of the uh, 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 of Camp Half Blood and everything like like just, just just like a new person picking on Percy and making him feel weak and actually showing up and everything. But Cl- Clarice actually seems to she actually seems seems to have like slightly more motive in this compared to the story. I think um compared to the first book anyway. I think she she actually definitely in this like in this she she actually given that they actually established that glory is what brings a name up and what makes it more notable and actually what makes it more kind of less less kind of like you're 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 less able to actually mess with someone who actually has power to their name so you know Clarice already has glory to her name but then she doesn't want you know she she she, she doesn't seem to want Percy to actually build up any glory for his name you know maybe she even actually enjoys kind of being able to taunt him or 
um, mess about with him and everything. So then she she seems intent on making him actually um, denounce the Minotaur story and actually denounce himself as a victor or as, you know glorious in any way shape or form so she wants him to, to denounce the story but then he has the horn the horn is there in his room so unless they plan on, de- on destroying that if they even can it's pretty much a futile attempt but then she, she she seems to be intent on him you know like she, she even said like you know like every kid that comes in here thinks they're some hot shit and thinks they're special and everything so the last thing she seems to want or need is percy believing that too and actually engaging in that kind of like mentality and we had um grover going into the woods and i think we we, we, we saw a wood nymph for the first time so i think that there, there are there, there's definitely more than one there's definitely more than one but i think they they, they, they do hang around the woods and like that is pretty much their domain and everything um but it's also like that it's kind of like a shared domain but like um between the satyrs and the wood nymphs I, I don't know if the centaurs were there i can't remember seeing a centaur. I, don't, I don't know if that's where chiron would go like if, if that would be a shared domain for them too i think it makes sense it would be but i, don't know, I can't remember if, if it actually is but the council of the cloven elders i believe it's called um, is the kind of el- the, 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 the elder satyrs and everything, the ones who are pretty much like the um, the kind of leaders of the satyr section of Camp Half-Flood and everything, because I think um, satyrs are pretty much like, like they're, 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 they're more like mythological creatures than they are, like like satyrs and centaurs and wood nymphs, like they're more like mythological creatures than they are like children of gods or anything like that. So <clears throat> they're more like children of the earth and children of nature, which is, I think, there is a very, I think I, I think, you know... With the ending of the story, that the, the, there is like a very particular kind of character arc. I'm actually looking, for, like, really looking forward to, to seeing them explore for Sator, for 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 Sator, for Grover, like him being a Sator, like him having him having the belief, him him holding the beliefs he does and believing in the the quest that he believes in and everything. I'm I'm really looking forward to them exploring that side of him and that side of his history, and his kind of his hopes and his dreams and everything. So seeing the Council of Clever Elders for the first time was that was actually really cool too. Seeing here, seeing him kind of go there to visit them to seek advice and seek guidance and everything and then that's how he finds out that sally is still alive and she's actually still um you know because then even even the, the way they showed her dying too i think it actually you know does look very similar to, to the minotaur to, to the minotaur dying and it does look very similar to, to mrs dodd's dying in the beginning too like she kind of dissolved in like a golden kind of shiny kind of dust and everything so she didn't really kind of die in like a typical way so like that alone and even even grover saw that along with percy too so that alone kind of made him kind of question like is she really dead like she she died like a monster and i think even then the monsters don't really die like they just kind of recover somewhere else and then they come back even stronger so the council then kind of showed him like oh she didn't die she was like um Hades reached out at the last possible moment and grabbed her and then pulled her down to the underworld so now she's being kept prisoner down there so she's still alive she's still alive and the the, the wooden nymph design looks like I don't know how, how much of that would be practical versus versus visual effects or anything but the wooden nymph design looks so cool like even the designs for Mrs. Dodds the design for the Minotaur and the design for the wooden nymphs just looks like the actual like work I'm, I'm really hoping the wooden nymph work was actually practical because then that is just such a good job such a good job on them and even the environmental design actually showing off like um how even the council like the actual kind of area like the, the actual forest area for the for the council but then even like the forest area for the woodlands alone is like looks more like like a general kind of forest like a f- f- forest like woodlands but then the area for the actual council actually looks like looks like its own kind of domain within camp half flood and everything so that's like a really cool kind of touch and we, we even saw satyrs when um other satyrs when um i think it was um chiron giving percy the tour of camp half flood too so i think they even then they do come out of that area to actually kind of you know coexist among the other half bloods and everything so just seeing how diverse this world is and how expansive it can be is really really cool and we also have explored um that like the kind of the era like not the era but like the kind of um i guess you could say era like the kind of sect if you will of like forbidden children so like the like forbidden children are the are the are half bloods and, and they're the gods of the children that came came after Zeus, um, Poseidon and Hades made that, that, that pact over the river Styx and everything because I think it was during World War II that they established that their, their, their kids were becoming far too powerful and they were affecting the human timeline and, and, and like the natural course of human history and they were causing too much carnage and chaos so then they, they, they all... The way I interpreted it was that along with the human war of like, you know, like um, the allied powers versus the Axis powers and everything it was also like, um, you know, like um, the, 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 the war like um, among the... the children of the big three too so it was like it was like an army of it was the army of zeus and poseidon's children versus the entire army of hades children but then the damage caused by that 
arguably even bigger than 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 the human wars and everything too so then because of that they made the pact but then even after that like you know poseidon fathered um percy and then zeus fathered talia and everything i think hades didn't father anyone like he actually he 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 was actually a man of his word he actually was a man of his words and then that kind of but like both of his brothers had the audacity to father children even after that so then that you know understandably that pissed him off enough for him to you know, um, he supposedly steal the master bolt and everything. So then, because of that, like, like, um, th- th- um I think Thalia, th- Thalia was the first one who was hunted and everything, but then she was found by Luke, and then Luke and her found Annabeth and everything, so then they were guided by Athena towards, um, Camp Half-Blood and everything, so then, but then Thalia never made it, so hopefully soon we'll find out exactly what happened to her, but yeah, Luke and, um, Annabeth made it, but I think, yeah, in, in the book, I think Grover was actually with them as well, like, I think that was his first kind of quest, as it, like, I think that was his first protection quest, like, to protect Luke and Thalia and Annabeth and get them both, get all three of them to camp half blood safely but then Thalia never made it she she fell behind so yeah so I think again I think L- L- Luke is arguably like the, 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 the oldest of, of any of them there and everything like by, by like a few years at most like not like he's in his like 70s or anything but yeah but I think in the last episode I think um, Grover mentioned he was he was like 24 years old like in, in human years he'd be 24 so but I think in, in say two years he's probably he's probably still like a teenager so and I think there also does seem to be somewhat of like a nice a nice kind of parallel towards like Grover being the one to finally crack and actually tell him the, the the truth about his mother and everything like i think i think i think grover obviously did it knowing that percy like percy wouldn't accept the quest any other way like like if he knew that his mother was involved and she was in the same place that the master bot was then he'd obviously agree to go out and, and, and stuff and you know whether or not it's clear to the others that he's only going because of his mother doesn't doesn't like it is inconsequential for the time being like the fact that he's agreeing to go now you know they're looking for a yes and they're looking for him to go there so you know on on the way Gro- Gro- grover can also convince him of the importance of, of the master bolt and what it could mean if they don't retrieve it in time or deliver on time and what it means for the for the rest of the world and his mother included and everything so it's a nice parallel from him actually you know even if like the betrayal from last episode did sting him like of, of grover getting him kicked out of school or cool and everything even if that did sting now grover is actively helping him kind of get kickstarted on the quest to save his mother and everything too so it's like a nice kind of parallel and kind of you know Hopefully, it's like a nice kind of boost to their friendship as well. As Grover actually informing him on how he can actually help save his mother, and everything. So, so I do. I think with all the changes this series is making already, with all the changes that the story is making already, I I do kind of wonder if they're gonna explore the whole forbidden child kind of part of the story anymore. Like if they're if they're gonna take that time to kind of maybe explore more of like what of what the kind of era of forbidden chi- uh, forbidden children means for Camp Half Blood and what it means for the for the world now. Like you know like um as the Greek kind of world, like uh, as the Greek world um, of gods and and their kind of beings have evolved along with Western civilization, like I, I wonder if maybe this story is going to kind of take more of a look at exactly what the Forbidden Children and, and their existence means for the gods and for the culture of half-bloods and how much more danger half-bloods could be in because of them and maybe like how much more prone like that kind of world is to being on the brink of war and maybe even beyond that because their existence too and like 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 how much more damage could be done because of that too so i'm i'm, I'm curious as, as to how many other changes this this the story can take or what other kind of directions it could diverge in in kind of certain aspects and stuff so yeah i'm i'm curious i've also noticed in this i think it's, it's like an editing it's a thing in the editing too like um sometimes it does take like different like like the, 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 there are cuts after different scenes where it cuts to all black and there's no volume and then it cuts to like a whole new different scene so it, it reminds me of like the way that like um network tv works where it where it like um cuts off at like one scene and then cuts to black and then takes a little bit of a pause before slowly kind of like um fading into like a new scene and everything so it reminds me of that i, I, I don't know if that's like an intentional thing like if it's giving it if it's like if they're deliberately trying to give it the vibe of network tv or if it's just like a like an editing choice for this because i think this is like a streaming series it's not like on like any network it is a disney plus show so it's streaming for this episode anyway i think they, 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 they did have like a number of different kind of sections and different scenes to it so i think maybe in that case the editing did work in their favor because i think otherwise it would have just kind of felt maybe like the pacing was off or it was just like jumping from one thing to the next but then having the cuts there kind of did allow it to introduce but then for me the only issue was given how short the last episode was every time there was almost every time there was a cut i wondered like oh wait are we ending things here now like are we gonna have to wait for the for the for the for the, for the remaining half of this to be in the next episode or something but no then 
it would actually go into the next scene. Um, but I think, yeah, for now, that might be it. Um, I've written a lot down again. This one seemed like it actually had, like, a lot more and, like, a lot le- le- left me with a lot more to think about and a lot more to talk about and everything. So, yeah, this was a great second episode. It actually expanded a lot more and actually, like, it, it, it really took its time introducing kind of Camp Half-Blood and its culture and, and its kind of history and everything, like, like just that much more and actually kind of showcasing kind of um, Percy's newfound place in the world and everything, like, especially in the world of Half-Blood too. So, great continuation for the story. Really, really loved it. And actually see, it, and then again, like, like seeing like this being an ad- ad- adaptation like ad- ad- this being an adaptation like seeing so many of the things I've actually read about actually kind of being brought to life and actually being brought up in so, such such colourful and such kind of um you know fruitful kind of ways just feel so good as well so as an adaptation like so far so far so good I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with that I'm really enjoying the way the story's unfolding the way the characters are actually meeting each other and interacting the way that those interactions are happening the way that Percy is discovering more about himself and actually learning more about himself and, and the way he's kind of reacting to this environment as kind of humanly as possible and everything and you know I, I'm just really eager to, to, to carry on with the story and and, and see what um, what more there is um, for them to uncover as the plot thickens and as the plot unfolds folds and everything too so but yeah that is pretty much all i've got from uh this episode so yeah that was percy jackson and the olympian season one episode number two so thank you guys as always so much for being here and for watching this video if you guys enjoyed it then feel free to leave a like and comment on we thought the, on what you thought of both of these episodes and how you thought they kind of you know paired up together and how you thought like they kind of you know bounce off of one another and and, and and if you've read the books then what you're looking forward to seeing coming up next uh, and if you haven't read the books then what you thought of the story so far and 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 and, and, and how it's kind of been you know um coming across to you and, and and what you've enjoyed most and you know what, what characters you're looking forward to seeing more of and everything like that and for those interested the full-length reaction will be up over on patreon so you can go check that out over there uh, but for now that is pretty much it so until the next time bye bye for now